Rebecca tried it and said it tastes like poop. Not that I know what poop really tastes right. like, but it smells like poop. It was awful. It, I did not care for it. I've drank about half of it though. So this morning we came back for breakfast and I decided to get something different. I got the French toast. Um, I forget what all it has the Hawaiian sweet bread and does it have macadamia nuts? I think so. And macadamia nuts, I think. So, um, also has strawberries on it and it has a coconut or, or maple syrup to go on top. So, um, Rebecca was not quite as adventurous and got the same thing as she got yesterday, except she got all bacon today. She did not get the sausage. She got a mix yesterday. I at first just put the coconut syrup on one of these because I wasn't sure if I would like it or not. But these are some of the best, some of the best French toast I've ever had, if not the best French toast. One of the things that we like about going to Hawaii as compared to going to other places is that we always find time to relax. So after breakfast, we went back down to the beach and did two of our favorite things. We watched people and waves. After breakfast and our little excursion down to the beach, we took the almost 40 minute drive over to the Maui Tropical Plantation. We made reservations here before we left home, but you may or may not need them. It just depends on the time of year you go. We'll leave a link to them in the description. So we are on the tram for our pineapple plantation tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and uh, waiting for it to start. It was a nice little walk up from the car. And we're actually uh, going right now. And to get your pineapple plant started, what you would do is simply take home your pineapple, twist off the crown, let the crown dry out for just two days, and then plant them right into the ground. It takes 14 months for your first pineapple to grow. It's going to grow directly in the center of your plant. It'll be your only normal sized pineapple. 18 months later, you're going to have about four to six other pineapples, but they're not going to grow in the center like the first ones. So they're going to grow from the size of the plant and they won't be any bigger than the size of your fist. brown they are considered seeds so I have one of the world's largest seeds here this is basically how they grow it's really simple you'll see them all over the coastlines they travel thousands and thousands of miles they practically just root themselves and they are self harvesting so when they're ready they're just gonna fall right to the ground now can you imagine that falling onto your head from an 80 foot tree here it is no fun. We call it a permanent stay here in Maui. And because they are so harvesting, Hawaii does have a state law to trim down our coconut trees in public areas every four to eight months. And the reason why for that, there has been over 150 deaths in the past just from these falling coconuts alone. So that is actually more than shark attacks worldwide, believe it or not. So never park or sleep under a full set of coconut trees. <laughs> so back then, how the Hawaiians would hust their coconut open, they would have to go down to the beach, find a real sharp lava rock, similar to this. Now there is no machine in Hawaii that can husk open a coconut. Because we'll never know the size or the shape of the seed on the inside. They're all different. So that's the reason why they're all hand husked. Now there are actually records to husking a coconut open. There is a Polynesian man. He lives on the island of Oahu. He can husk his coconut open in three seconds. But he's a cheater. He uses a machete. So three easy wax. He's got it right open. There is a woman. She lives on this island. 
she lives just behind those mountains in Lahaina. She can husk her coconut open in two minutes. It's a much slower process than three seconds, but she doesn't use a pickaxe. She doesn't use a machete. What she uses is her teeth. Oh my so really crazy. So we just finished the tram ride. This was more than just a pineapple plantation. They grow many different types of trees and fruits. And we learned quite a bit. I was actually thoroughly entertained. We had a really good tram um, driver and tour guide. Yes, two. At the end of the tour, you get a cup of fruit that lets you sample some of the things that they grow here. So we are in our car. We just finished our pineapple plantation tour. And it has a just about any tropical plant you can think of. It has pineapples, it has coconuts, macadamia nuts. Star fruit. Jackfruit. Jackfruit. Um, coffee. Flowers. Just lots of flowers with like the number two lay making flower. Um, and then they, have, they actually have a restaurant here that's a farm to table restaurant where everything that they serve there is grown on this uh, plantation here. Uh, there's nothing that comes from the outside at all. There's a uh, coffee shop here that they, I believe, use uh, the coffee beans from here uh, on and everything. So um, this, is, this was a really nice tour. So um, I really enjoyed it. Yes. So one thing we forgot to say here at the um, this plantation tour, they have a, a gift shop, and we got some. We got some fudge. They had lots of different types of fudge, but we wanted to get something that was more Maui or Hawaiian, so we got the our, Maui mud pie. Our normal go-to fudge is peanut butter. Peanut butter fudge because it's the best fudge, and they had it, but we did not get it. We thought this would be better to try, and it was it was okay. It's okay. It has a little bit of a taste like uh, what I say. Caramel popcorn. Or car no caramel. Uh, those little. Oh, kettle corn. No. The. <laughs> we don't know. Something caramel popcorn. No, the uh, those candies. The. Oh, candy, candy corn. Candy corn. Yeah, corn. candy corns. <laughs> That's it. And Brent and, also wanted to get a healthy, rejuvenated drink. One of. One of the things they talked to us about on this tour is the coconut water, how good it is for you. So I thought I would try something different, and it's coconut water with pineapple. And Rebecca tried it and said it tastes like poop. Not that I know what poop really tastes right. like, but it smells like poop. It was awful. It, I did not care for it. I've drank about half of it, though, trying to just muscle through it. So <laughs> we'll see if I can finish it, but I probably shouldn't because it just does not taste good. We are now going to the city of Paia. This is normally whenever you go do the road to Hana. It's one of the last places that you go to on the way there and stop. We ended up going to the Paia fish market for lunch. The food was amazing. It was really fresh. We came back here a second time on the way to the airport a couple of days later. It was so good. From Paia to Kipi Beach, Kukipa Beach. I'm not sure how to say it. But uh, we asked about Jaws. Jaws is a very famous uh, place for people to surf here. And they said that's more in the winter time, so they told us to come to this beach. So we are driving to the Haleakala Crater to watch the sunset. It is very windy. I think it's about um, I think 28 miles up to the top and the speed limit says it's 30 miles an hour. But it will probably take at least an hour to get up there. So um, it's very slow driving but it's supposed to be beautiful. never read anywhere where it costs $25 to get in. Um, I mean, it's fine that we have to do that, but I just thought I would let you know that 
it is $25 to enter the park. But it's good for three days. We've driven up to the top of the lookout. Can't drive any higher, so we're walking up to the top so we can get a good view. It is spectacular. The air is thinner up here, so get out of breath a lot quicker. We have about an hour left until the sun sets, so we are just sitting here looking at this view. Just like that, it is gone. I have I've never seen a sunset like that. The sun was up and then all of a sudden, it probably within two minutes, it was from full sun to completely gone. When you say two minutes, maybe? At least, yeah. It was crazy, I've never seen that. We drove the hour down, back down from uh, looking at the sunset. And we are now about to eat dinner. We came to a place uh, called Duck Kitchen which is DA Kitchen, and um, I saw this from someone else on YouTube that suggested it, and um, this is one of the top rated uh, Yelp reviewed places on Maui, so uh, we thought we'd give it a try. We ordered uh, Spam Masubi, which is like a Spam, like Spam Sushi. And then we got a mixed plate, which has some fried fish, and it has chicken teriyaki, beef teriyaki, and something else that I can't don't recall. So it should be good. All right, I'm gonna give this Spam Masubi a try. The food comes out really quick here. We got this out and didn't even get to try it. So we got our main meal out. Yeah, it's good. So the review of this for us is a little mixed. Um, I like it. Um, it's good. I think it's pretty good Hawaiian food. Uh, <clears throat> Rebecca, on the other hand, didn't really care for it all that much. Part of it is she uh, fell asleep on the way down the mountain, so her ears are all stopped up and just doesn't feel overall real well. So I don't think anything would have been um, Anything new like this would have been great for her, so um, maybe we can come back here sometime and try it again. We'll see. But um, I think it's definitely worth trying trying out. Um, the the prices are they're a little on the steep side, but the portions are gigantic. I think a lot of people here are probably regretting getting their own plate of food when you almost have to share it with somebody. So. Whenever you uh, share with somebody, it makes the prices actually pretty good.